I admit, I actually had a lot of fun getting this video together because it forced me to really dig as deep as I could into Lightroom Mobile. So for this video, what I wanna do is show you 10 hacks or secrets or tricks that I found while experimenting with different gestures and things in Lightroom on my iPhone. And I think you'll find some of these a lot of fun. They're, they're just gonna help make your time using Lightroom more enjoyable and more productive. So with that, let's kick in. All right, so this is Lightroom and I'm running it on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm recording this on November 13th, 2023. So you can see my folder at the top. I took these photos yesterday on the 12th at a local preserve not far from where I live. Now, this is the grid view, which is probably the most common view that Lightroom users are familiar with. Did you know though, that you can change the density or the size of the thumbnails in the grid? This is something that I discovered one time, I, my, my thumbs were moving too fast. And you can see if I take two fingers and I pinch in, we can get this small or high density view. So you can see a bunch of images at the same time. If we pinch out just a little bit, we'll get this view, which I call this um, medium. So I call this small, this is medium. And this is what I typically use for my grid view. If we go a little bit wider, that's large. So you can see that the thumbnails are larger and then we can go to full screen or one up or, or extra large where each image is pretty much full screen, which is really cool. So right off the bat, if you wanna change how your grid view is displayed, just pinch in and you'll get your different sizes. All right, so that was tip number one. Now let's move on to tip number two, which is also in the grid view. Did you know that you can actually have additional information overlaid on top of each of these image thumbnails? You can, all you need to do is double tap on the screen. You'll see the first one shows contributors. Now I don't have any contributors displayed because I'm not sharing these photos in a private album within Lightroom. If I did, I'd see that information here. If I double tap again, now I have file type so I can see what kind of file type each of these images are. In this case here, most of these are DNG files. If I double tap again, you can see we have our flags and our star rating. So there's a photo there on the fourth row with a pick flag and then right below it and to the right, there's a photo with a one star rating. So if you go through your rating process and you go to this view over here, you'll be able to quickly see at a glance which photos may have a pick flag or a certain number of stars in case you want to work on those first or if you wanna set those for deletion. If we double tap again, we now have photo info. So here you can see the date and time a photo was taken as well as the resolution and the file name. Let's do it again. Now we have the EXIF, which is also very handy. So here you can see the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO that you used to take the photo. And we can also hide all the overlays. You can also view overlays in the single image edit mode. So if you tap on an image to go into the edit mode here, just like in the grid view, if you double tap, you'll see this overlay cluster at the top. And what's cool is if you tap in that cluster, and it has to be in the cluster, not outside of it, but if you tap in it, you can cycle through different pieces of information here. And so you can have some of this information, the same information that was in the grid view, but you also have some other information like here, you have the camera and the lens that was used to take the photo. Now there is another very important tool that all photographers should be using that is also accessible here by double tapping. So if you have the overlay view enabled and you double tap again, you'll now have your histogram. This is super important. I highly recommend having this up, especially when you're editing a photo and this is how you would access it. You can also enable it by tapping on the ellipse icon on the top right and then going to the menu to enable it. But I just find that double tapping is a lot easier. With the histogram enabled, if you double tap again, it'll hide the overlay over there. So again, double tap to get to your info view, tap through to cycle the information, double tap again for the histogram and a third time to hide it. All right, let's go back to the grid view for tip number three. So Lightroom has a pretty cool selection mode here where you can select multiple photos and do different things to them. To enter the select view, the easiest way to do that is to tap and hold on an image. And you'll see now that we are in this select mode. The selected image has a blue border with a blue check mark on the bottom right in the thumbnail. You can continue to select additional photos by tapping on them. But if you wanna select multiple photos, in this case here, I wanna select the nine photos below, I can tap on this image and then drag across and then I can go down. 
And that's just a lot easier way to select a bunch of images at once. Of course, you can tap on individual photos as well. And if you wanna remove one of the photos, you can just tap on it and it'll be removed. And when you're in selection mode, you can see you have a few different options in terms of adding or moving these photos to specific albums. If you made edits to a photo, you can copy those edits and then in the selection mode, you can paste them to multiple photos at the same time. You can also share these photos, either downloading it to your camera roll or sharing it through another app. And then of course you can remove the photos, either remove it from an album or delete them outright. When you're done with the selection mode, just tap on done on the top right and you'll be back in your regular grid view. For tip four, let's go back to the edit mode. I'm gonna tap on this image here. You can see we have our primary editing toolbar at the bottom with presets, crop, edit, masking, and healing. You can tap on edit to bring up your editing tools, or you can also just swipe up and that'll bring up the editing tools as well. Now here's the cool thing. Let's say I tap on light. You can see here are our slider controls and our different tools for the light tool edit section. If you wanna get rid of this, all you need to do is swipe down and that'll go away. And then you can swipe down again to remove the editing toolbar. But you can also swipe up and then swipe up again to get back to that. And when you swipe up that second time, it will always bring you to the last section that you were in. So let's say I was in color and then I swipe down and swipe down. If I swipe up twice, you'll see that I'm back in color. So again, you can tap on these. That's obviously easy enough, but I am a big fan of gestures. It just makes me move a lot faster. So being able to get in and out of those tools with just a few swipes is a welcome addition. All right, before we move on to the next tip, really quickly, I wanna tell you about something that I'm very excited about, and that is my new free email newsletter that I am starting. It is called Lightroom Everywhere, which is the same name as the course that I offer. This is basically for photographers who are looking to edit their photos even better, and streamline their photo gear, and especially take better photos with any camera, especially the one in your pocket. So if you're interested, I've got the link in the description below. Just click on it. Again, it's totally free to sign up. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I've got a lot of cool things planned for it. So I look forward to seeing you there. Of course, also my course Lightroom Everywhere is available. And that link is in the description below. All right, let's move on. For tip number five, I'm gonna swipe up again. And if I scroll over, you'll see there are two different tool sections for optics and profiles. By default, you may not even see those and you may not even realize that they've been hidden. If you don't see these two sections and you want access to the optics tools and the profiles browser, which are both fantastic, what you'll do is you'll tap on the ellipse over here. You'll then go to view options and you will probably have this switch disabled for always show profiles and optics. I highly, highly recommend having that enabled and then tapping over here and you'll have the optics and profiles browser. Tip number seven has to do with how you copy and paste edit settings, which is something I referred to not too long ago. If I go to this image here, which already has some edits made, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a few more just to make it really obvious that this image was edited. So here you can see there is our edited image. Let's say I wanna take the edits from this image and I wanna paste it to that image because it's kind of similar. There are two ways that you can do that. The first way is from the grid view, if you tap and hold on an image, which brings you into the selection mode, you'll see that the copy settings button at the bottom is now selectable. So if I tap on that, basically what Lightroom did was it copied all of the edits that you made to that image to the clipboard. And now with those settings copied to the clipboard, I can tap on this image, which I want to paste to, and then I'll tap on paste over here. You can see the dialog box that wants you to confirm. And it says that this action cannot be undone. This is true, you can't unpaste, but you can reset the image back to the original state. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on apply. So basically what happened was Lightroom copied all of the settings from this image, all the changes over to this one over here. But let's say I only wanted to copy the changes I made to the light tools and not to the color. Well, that requires you to do the copy and paste in a different way. I'm gonna go ahead, just like I mentioned here, and I'm gonna reset this to import. So now the image is back to its original state, and I'm gonna back out of here. If I want to specify which tools or which changes I want to copy, I need to go into the image itself. You'll tap on the ellipse on the top right, and then you're gonna tap on copy settings. Now here, we have a much more granular list of controls. We can either choose entire sections, so I can do all of edit, for example, or I can just do everything under light. Or if you tap on the disclosure triangle to the right, let's say I only want exposure and contrast, but I don't want 
any of these other settings to be copied. Now I can go back and then when I tap on the check mark on the top right, only those sliders were copied to the clipboard. If I go to the grid view and I tap and hold here to enter the select mode, now I can tap paste, tap apply, and only those sliders that I had copied will be pasted over. So again, when you're in the select mode and you tap copy, Lightroom will copy all the changes made to that photo. And when you paste it, it'll paste them. But if you want to control exactly what gets copied, you'll go into the edit mode and then you'll go to the ellipse menu and you'll select copy settings. All right, for the next tip, we're gonna talk about rating and reviewing. So in Lightroom, you can rate a photo using either zero to five stars or one of three different flags, or rather two flags and one no flag. So you can either do a pick flag or a reject flag. To do that, you'll tap to go into an image here. You'll then tap on the ellipse and you're gonna to go to info and rating. You can see below the film strip, there are your stars. You can tap on any star to apply it, or you can tap again to remove it. And then to the right of that, you have two different flags or the unpicked state, which is currently what it's in. So you can either tap your pick flag or your reject flag or none of them. So what you can do is depending on how you choose to rate and review your photos, you can either go here and say, all right, this is a two star and swipe over and this is a four star. This one is a pick flag, but there's an even easier way and that's called speed review mode. So the way that I like to do that is while I'm in this info and rating view, I'll tap on the screen here. So I go into full screen. So there are no distractions. Now, if I were to pretend to draw a vertical line straight through the middle of the screen, the left of the screen will be four stars and the right will be four flags. What I mean by that is if on the left half of the screen, I tap and drag up, I can apply stars. So here you can see how quickly it is to apply anywhere from zero to five stars. Or if I tap on the right and drag up, I can apply a pick flag or I can drag down to apply a reject flag. And so it's super easy to just go like this, like this, like that. And that is the speed review mode in Lightroom. And again, if I back out into the grid view here and I double tap until we have flags and ratings, you can now see all the images with the different ratings that we gave it. Now let's move on to cropping. And this is a very quick one, but it, I thought it's interesting to highlight. Let's say I want to crop one of these images here. Like I want this one over here. So what I'll do is by tapping on it, I go into the edit mode and then I'm gonna tap on the crop mode here. Now, let's say I crop this in like this and I realize, oh, you know what? I actually wanted to lock my aspect ratio. So to undo that very easily, all you need to do is just double tap and that will reset your crop. So now what I can do is I can tap on the lock so that I can lock the aspect ratio. Now let's say here I want to crop it to a square. So now I can do that very easily and there is my crop. But again, if you just wanna reset it, all you need to do is double tap. And when you're done, tap on the check mark to finish out. And to wrap up my tips, this has to do with previewing the changes you make to a photo. So let's go to this first photo again. You can see that I made changes to the light and color sections because of those little dots right below the labels. Now let's say I wanna see what the image looks like without any of the changes made just to the light section. Well, if I tap and hold on the light, I'll see the image. It'll have the color changes that I made, but all of the light changes will be hidden. Same thing for color. If I tap and hold on color, it will hide the changes I made to the color tools. Now, if I want to see the original image without any edits that I made to it, all you have to do is tap and hold on the image itself, and that is gonna show you the before image without any edits. And then finally, if you do make changes to a slider, let's say I increase the exposure way too much and I just wanna quickly bring it back to the default state, all you have to do is double tap on the slider and it'll return it back to its zero state. So those are some pretty cool tips, right? Like I think those kinds of usability or quality of life hacks just make using Lightroom more enjoyable. I know it is for me and I, I really did have a lot of fun trying to find all these different little things and I've got even more. So there's gonna be another follow-up video, some more hacks for Lightroom on mobile devices, especially on the iPad too. Now I've also got this video right here where it's also Lightroom mobile except it is on my iPad and it shows an entire editing workflow where I start in Lightroom, bring the photo over to Photoshop and then bring it back to Lightroom. It's super cool. So I definitely recommend you check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, Thumbs up is helpful as well as subscribing and clicking on the bell icon.
All right, everyone. See you on the next one.